I will also say, it went by like so fast. Like the first day, the first day when you're just at sea, you're like, what? This is, why is this taking so long? By like the last couple of days, you're like, holy cow, I can't believe it's over already. It was, I, I'm, I'm stunned that I had an amazing time. But when I filled out the comment card, I was, I was hitting the excellence for like everything and I was not even being ironic. But you also know that in the gig economy, it takes a lot for me to not give an excellent. If I'm not going to give a five star, I'd rather abstain. So all of the staff I interacted with, I gave them five stars across the board. And uh, the, the only thing I gave low stars to was the experience of the onboard Wi-Fi. Because I didn't use it because it was $90 for a, a one gigabyte. <laughs> I was like, you got to be... That's horrible. I'm obviously not going to pay 90 bucks per gigabyte. Are you crazy? I guess it's like hard to get the internet in the middle of the sea or whatever. Apparently. Like Elon, what are you doing on instead? You're sending like desperate tweets on Twitter. It's, it's horrendous. Like the, the, but then you, we got a text that was like, hey, you've entered international waters. And I was like, I don't know about that. Um, your current data roaming charge is $15 per megabyte. And I was like, damn, dude, I got to get like that $90 a, or the, a gigabyte plan going here. I don't know. $15 a meg. Could send like a $20,000 tweet if I had a gift to it or something. Anyway. I had a, I honestly had a great time. I'm choosing not to think about the environmental impact that the cruise ship has and reminding myself that, that it probably would have sailed even without me. I'm also hoping that I don't get... I mean, like, I'm feeling better than I felt in eight weeks legitimately, and I continue to get better on the... I would, I would say I'm feeling, like, 100% after the, the course of antibiotics and also the, you know, a week of eating way more than I should, but um, a lot of people definitely on the last day, I was starting to get a little misanthropic again. Like day three, I was like, everybody's, I love everybody, everybody's cool. And then like day seven, there were people that were like, they're six inches away from the sign that says, please put on your masks before disembarking from the ship. They have their mask in their hand, but they're just like dry heaving, coughing in their hands. And I'm like, like you couldn't just put it on, like just you're you're gonna put it on in like a uh, like a step anyway. You couldn't have just put it on earlier. Disney Cruise Line is the most environmentally conscious you could have gone on. You know what? I'll um, I'm choosing to believe that. I also loved, like, again, I, don't, I know cruises are horrendous for the environment. Um, obviously, I'm not trying to deny that. But I was laughing when you're in, like, the bathroom. It's like, hey, we're uh, partnered with, like, uh, something, something, something for environmental support. So if you could please uh, reuse your towels as many times as possible. And I was like, yeah, that would do it. Sure, they're dumping, like a metric ton of human shit two miles offshore from like a a fishing town that has 300 people in it and there but, but at least i used i only used two towels for seven days so like at least it's it's no big deal yeah directly into a coral reef with like at risk chilean sea bass in it and stuff like that Anyway. It's like fish poop, though. Well, yeah, but, like, they, what are they going to do? It's not like they're going to put it on land. Like, it's kind of, you know, we're bringing our poop to them. It's like a, it's an away game. I don't expect the fish to poop anywhere else. Also, I do have to say, I don't think I'm going to get a recurrence of my salmonella and uh, Campylobacter because... And this is literally my one complaint about the cruise, and I understand why they do it. They won't cook your uh, meat medium or uh, medium rare or lower. I couldn't even get my favorite dish, chicken sashimi, which I love to eat, especially in early June. But even 
I had the, like I, the whole week I was looking at the menu, right, for this last dinner, and I was like, oh man, I'm gonna get the beef Wellington. I gotta, you don't get that many opportunities to get beef Wellington. I'm gonna get the beef Wellington. Our waiter comes over, gives us his recommendations, which were on point for the whole cruise, even though I'm sure they're like reading off a script or something. And uh, I said, the, the beef Wellington was notably absent. I said, do you recommend the beef Wellington? He said, it's good, but we have to cook it at least to medium. I said, oh. And then I thought for two seconds and I said, I'll have the beef Wellington. And then it came out and it wasn't medium. It was well done. And it was still pretty good, but it was mostly the, the pastry and the, the mushroom filling. But it's I, I get it. It's probably because they, you know, they don't want people to get dysentery on the ship, which is, I mean, it's a pretty first world problem, but... Ooh. I get it's hard to cook beef wellington, especially you're on a freaking ship in the middle of the ocean. I also thought that they would like come back to Vancouver and they would have to like restock for a little bit. But literally as we were getting off the boat, like the Disney Corporation was like, we're done with you. I don't want to play with you anymore. Like get the hell out of here. We were like passing people that were in line to get on the ship that we had just been on like 15 minutes earlier. I'm like, how do they, this is actually like a logistical miracle. How do you keep this thing running? It's crazy. They're, they said they were, they're selling, or not selling, but just serving 9,000 cups of coffee a day. They're, they're cracking 5,000 eggs for breakfast every morning. Like, how the hell do you, do you and you don't, they, they literally, they go to port for like 10 hours, and then they're like, yeah, we're good to go again. It's, it's crazy, man. People who turn those ships over are freaking cracked. Dude, I feel like our like housekeeping staff clean. We have a baby, and they cleaned our whole room in like forty five seconds. Like it's it's incredible. Yes, we have a baby. Is this news to anybody? Wonder how much liquor they go through. I would say a lot. <laughs> it's definitely. There's no doubt about that. A ton. I would say a staggering amount, probably. That's good. You know what? And Kate and I both came up with this independently. I don't know if you've ever seen the movie Passengers. It's not very good, right? Um, it, it, in fact, it's worse than not very good. It's kind of troubling. You know, Chris Pratt wakes up on a star cruiser to, like, seed human life to another inhabitable planet. He's supposed to be in cryo sleep for, like, 80 years and then wake up for the last six months of the journey or something like that. Instead, he wakes up super early because, like, something malfunctioned. And then he gets horny and he's like, who's the biggest hottie that's still asleep on this damn ship that I could, like, damn to be my spouse for it for 80 years and then die on the fucking ship anyway um he uh ends up uh waking up jennifer lawrence because come on and uh you know they get into some fights about it but eventually they like reconcile and they like make a life together on the ship or whatever but regardless we kate and i both were like Remember in Passengers how, like, they, you know, wake up and they're drinking all the liquor and they're eating all the food? Like, that food was supposed to last, like, 500 people three months. But instead, there's two people just eating that shit for, like, 75 years. Like, all these people are gonna wake up and there's gonna be, like, no food and water left on the damn ship. Or, or they're gonna be on, like, gruel rations or something like that. And they'll be like, oh, don't worry. Chris Pratt ate... 80, 85,000 servings of lobster bisque while you were asleep. I guess, th to, to be fair, because they woke up, they did um, manage to save the ship from, like, having a... There was, like, there was something wrong with his radiation shielding or something. So they did save all their lives, but, like... Still, I mean, I would... You, they spent a lot of money on that. I'd probably be pissed. Anyway, I'm sure they go through a lot of alcohol. Because they, the, the Disney Cruise Line Corporation has perfected the art of making you spend money, or, well, let me rephrase, incentivizing you to spend money without feeling like you're spending money. You know, it's not all-inclusive, 
alcoholic beverages are are extra, but they're like, hey, do you want like a cocktail? It's an additional fee, but like if you just tell me you want it, I'll just bring it to you, and you won't even know how much it costs until like the invoice arrives in a week. Or if you're at like the a, a bar or a restaurant, and you're like, hey, can I get a a, a Comstock Michigan Two Hearted Ale? They'll say, yeah, sure. You say, how much is that? They say, don't worry about it. Just scan your, your room key right here. And you're like, what the hell? That's like basically free. For now. And eventually it won't be. But like in the moment when you buy it, you're like, that shit is free. Let's go. Too hard it is Bell's Brewery. It is. I, you're, you're absolutely right. I, uh... I mean, I asked for an IPA. They brought me a they brought me a two hearted ale. I never had it before. I said this is an incredible beer. I, then I looked it up online, and people said this is an incredible beer. And I was like, still got it. Still. <laughs> then I texted a photo of it to Dan, and I said, Have you ever heard of this? And he said, That's what all the normies around me drink. And I was like, Still got it. Wasn't like I had a Michelob Ultra and was like, "This is the nectar of the gods." So I, the, the palate is still there. Never, never, ever. My stepbrother got so drunk on a cruise they took away his drinking privileges. I did. I sort of got that vibe. You should never take this, but I sort of got the vibe that, like, on this cruise, you're treated like royalty. But if you cross the line, they would throw you in, like, a, a windowless cell until the end of the voyage. Like, if, if you just behave like a normal person and you don't cause problems, they're like, we basically are going to treat you like a god because you paid money for this. But if you, like, this is the, the damn ocean, so if you're causing, like, actual safety hazards, like, we, we do have the ability to throw you in prison. I'm going to reroll, man. Or, like, leave you in Ketchikan, Alaska, or something like that. I also, and, and I said this to Kate as well, this one, it might have a narrow sort of uh, window for people to get this punchline, but we, we both remarked, maybe day two or day three or something like that, and we were like, you know what? Being on this cruise, where you're treated like royalty, is actually just like the North American version of being a customer at literally any store in Japan. Like, we were treated well on the cruise. And I, I don't think that the staff were like, oh, we really like this guy. Like, I, I know that it's like, I'm, it's part of the game. And when the server was like, please make sure you fill out the comment card. And if there's anything I could do to make your service more excellent, let me know before you do. And I was like, I get it, buddy. Don't worry, I'm gonna give you five stars, okay? You're getting, nothing went wrong, you're getting five stars the, the whole way, okay? I'm not gonna give you four stars and be like, oh, the, you know, I like my waiter, but the beef wellington was only well done. Like, I'm not, that's, that's ridiculous. I'm not wearing a college football sweater. I don't think I need to be treated like royalty like that. But, um, I was also like, you're spending all this money and is basically like literally just being at a 7-Eleven in Japan. Like they, they treat you, in North America, you kind of, and, and I like it. Like I'm a, I'm a hostage to like, I, I kind of enjoy a store that treats you like shit. Like all those restaurants in America where they're like angry that you're there and they call you fat if you order like fried pickles and stuff like that. Like I'm kind of into that. But to, to get this experience of like great customer service you can either pay a ton of money to go on a cruise ship where they're incentivized to treat you like royalty or you could just go to japan and you could like buy like a soda at a convenience store and they will you'll get the same experience either way get the gold what did i what did i do with the gold did i get the i got the gold mobile viewer spotted i'm easily distractible today i haven't got my mental throughput going like the same as it normally is here. I gotta warm up a little bit. Are you saying that's a good thing? No, it's just a, it's an observation. You know, I'm, I, it was nice to be treated nicely by staff, but I was also, I mean, I'm the kind of person, if when I go to a, like a restaurant or like a store and the staff are disinterested with me and they act like annoyed that I'm there, I'm like, I'd probably be annoyed too. 
This is like, it's probably like the 50th shirt that I've sold today to the, like people that I don't even know. And I'm, I'm sure you get in, because I saw, they, they, people just ask like the same questions over and over. And they, you know, they're unfamiliar with the situation, but it gets annoying, right? You know, people are like, oh, is this the line for the bathroom? And they're like, no, the bathroom's downstairs. And then like answer that question like a thousand times a day with a smile on your face. And I can see why you'd be like, you'd look at me with like a withering glance when I come over and I'm about to ask you the same question, right? Makes sense to me. This guy's definitely a Twitch streamer. It's true. I did not get recognized on the cruise, which was nice. I will also say the average age of the of the people on the cruise was not like 70. It was like 67. No, it, it, there was a lot of like parents with uh, like young kids. Because, I mean, because it's a cruise that's, you know, Disney focused, right? Also, I have... <laughs> Maybe this is getting too close to home for some people. Why are... Um, okay, I gotta be careful with how I word this. If you're a couple with no kids, and you're on vacation, why do you sound so stressed out? Like, so many couples we saw, they would just be, like, walking, and then the guy would be like... Hey, where's my camera? And she'd be like, I told you it's in the bag, Gavin. And you're like, why don't you, like, you don't even, you're just two adults. You're, you're one guy with a backpack and a lady with a purse. And you're like, you're stressed out that you're, you're on a boat that's not going anywhere anyway. Like, I don't understand. Like, I'm not saying only people with kids can be stressed out. I'm just like, you know, you don't even have like that extra degree of difficulty. You should just be like, having cocktails and playing bingo right now, like enjoying life or something like that. Instead, you're like walking past the photo studio being like, oh, do you have the passport? It's crazy, man. On my cruise ship in 2019, someone literally, <laughs> this is not funny. <laughs> someone literally died and we missed our port of call for one of the days. I, I will say, I don't want to uh, like work on a cruise ship. But I, I do think that after you disembark, they should send you like a, an email that's like, here's all the shit that went down that you were not aware of. Should be like, you know, 25 people had like acute dysentery. There was an assault in one of the lounges after you were asleep for several hours. Like I would love to, and I would be like, damn, this staff is incredible because I had no idea that any of that shit was going down at all. You guys are amazing. Like when we went, uh, when you disembark, they give you, uh, that you walk past the table that says confiscated items. There were like two soccer balls on it and then like 50 knives. I didn't see a single knife on the whole cruise. So I got to say that I think the cruise staff were doing a great job because... <laughs> you know, there's knife people. You know, you're, several of you are probably a knife person. You're like, I know they said no weapons, but I, my knife does not leave my sight. I choose to not think about that whenever I'm in a crowded public place. They say, I know they said, please leave your weapons here, but this isn't a weapon. This is if somebody needs some clamshell plastic opened up to get to their DVD of The Mummy Returns. That's why I have this, okay? But there were like so many knives in the confiscated uh, goods section. I was like, you know, everything I saw, I was like, I have a ton of respect for this staff. Which is why I was getting so annoyed that everybody, like whenever you had to do anything that wasn't eat or drink, people were just like, why do they do it like this? Why don't they do it like this? I don't know, like, dude who's been retired for 17 years, but I'm guessing that they probably like know what they're doing because they do, it's an incredible uh, feat of both engineering and logistics and they've been doing it for like 30 years, so like, Maybe just you being in line and having a casual observation as like a as a patron doesn't give you all the answers for like, well, why don't they just have us line up over here instead? I don't know, because maybe that's where like people that are they have mobility concerns have to like be wheeled through or something like that. It's not just a place for you to go stand because you don't like standing next to people who are wearing a jersey of the rival school of your college alma mater that you graduated from 37 years ago. Like it's just not everything's like for you in order to create this 
fun experience for you. There's like a lot of other shit that has to. They got trays and stuff. They got medical supplies coming on. There's two two thousand staff. Why don't you just do it like this? It's crazy, man. What was the best food on the cruise? We had some nice, fancy meals, don't get me wrong. But I, I, I love the convenience of a buffet that's actually good. There was, there was some very solid buffet food. Most buffets kind of ass, I think. This buffet was like... I mean, it was like 15% ass, 85% really good. Which I feel like is an insane ratio for a buffet. Like, there's some stuff you should... I mean, I should just know. Like, any time there was, like, a rotisserie section, and it was like, hey, do you want, like, a slice of prime rib? And I'm like, let me guess. Cooked medium. I, why, I'm just walking into shit. I'm walking into damn spider webs, man. Who won Harry's chest? I'm here to tell... I, I would not win Harry's chest. There were some people on that ship that were hairier than I am. You know, and, and I mean this with all due respect because I could be one of them. But people who by like the end of the seven days, their shirts didn't fit right because the hair on the back of their neck was like pushing out their collar. I've been there. That's why you got to take care of that shit. Like, I don't know, every three or four days or something like that. But don't say ooh. That's, they can't control that. Why am I fighting both statues? What am I doing? Oh, people said, where's the Zane? Here's your damn Zane. Batteries, please. Batteries. 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 Some ba a little battery. What the hell is this? Shops now sell familiars for 10 coins. Useless? Okay. You, you only get one reroll. You got to use it appropriately. Hmm. Hmm. Swarm, kind of good. Gimpy kind of good. Let me get Gimpy. Help me out here. Holy cow. Pentagram. One damage up. Seven, five damage up. Okay, I gotta take Pentagram on this one. I would love some HP. Thank you. Uh, I would love the Humbling Bundle. Out of these, I gotta be honest. I gotta go Rubber Cement. I'll take a little meat on that one. Probably got to go with Rosary. This, uh, you know what? Kidney Stone's actually like kind of good now. Let me get Kidney Stone. Let me get Super Bandage. This looks like ass to me. This would be my reroll. Yeah, why not? Let's have some fun. Um, you guys want some cookies? I'll probably go straight into Satanic Bible here just to guarantee I stay alive. Probably get some extra golden chests for no reason. I'll take a little speed. I gotta be real with you, Pyromaniac's probably the best item, but I feel like you go Evil Eye with soy milk and just get some more. Like, it's a pretty good conversion rate there. That seems okay to me. What is this room? Oh, this is the Genesis room. You're not familiar with the Genesis room? Massive downgrade? Yeah, I mean, that's the way... It's the way it tends to go. But, or is it? Look at this! Holy cow! By the way, hello, Josh. Hello. Josh, I gotta say, I think you would be a, 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 a good... I don't, I don't want to call them cruisers, right? Like, what is someone that goes on a lot of cruises? Either way, I think you would love being on cruises, Josh. Retiree. There were, I mean, there was a fair amount of people that were on the older side of old. <laughs> there were also, and I don't, again, I don't want to make this an American versus the rest of the world sort of thing, okay? But like, there were a lot of people on the cruise who were like, hey, it's 545. Do you guys have a table for uh, 27? Like, people who took literally like... Like, two middle-aged... Oh, this is insanely good. Holy cow. Like, two middle-aged adults 
um, one set of their parents, so like a set of grandparents, and then like s there's seven children that are in range of ages from like 18 months to 18 years. And I was like, that, I don't know. Like, I, I feel like at the end of that, you almost need like a vacation from your vacation. That's just madness. But there's, I mean, there's, is there something sweet about that? I wouldn't disagree. But also, I feel like if I went on like a vacation like that, I would like, um, well, the kids are a different story. But that, if I went on a vacation like that with my parents, I would be like, we'll meet for dinner every night. And, the, and I love my parents, don't get me wrong. We, this is just the vibe. We'll meet for dinner every night, and the rest of the- maybe we'll have some excursions together. Maybe we'll go on a fan boat tour of- of the- the fish ladder in Ketchikan, Alaska, or whatever, but... Otherwise, we'll- we'll meet at dinner every night. We'll- we'll have a nice dinner together, we'll all go to bed at 8.30. Tell me about the fish ladder. Um... So there, there's a, a, in Ketchikan, Alaska, they built concrete steps for the salmon to spawn, which increases their spawn rate by 50%, in case you were interested. I mean, I gotta be honest, like, there was, <laughs> it was it, it's Ketchikan, Alaska, there wasn't like a whole lot of stuff where you'd be like, oh, did you know like uh, a UFO landed here or something? Did you know uh, Mozart was born here? They were like, we got a, we got a concrete staircase that fish go up. They, I learned some interesting stuff about Ketchikan, Alaska. For example, they have five um, chain restaurants. McDonald's, two Subways, a Starbucks. I forgot one of them, but the, the remarkable thing was that one of the chain restaurants was a Taco Time. I was like, you don't see a Taco Time too much. Even in, like, the U.S. at all, I feel. Like, I feel like I've only ever seen Taco Time in, like, B.C. And I've never seen anybody at them. <laughs> I, was, I was like, man, Ketchikan... Ketchikan, Alaska's got, like, one of the eight Taco Times remaining in the world. Washington's got a... It's a Northwest thing? I, I honestly thought Taco Time was made in, like, Saskatoon. And was barely hanging on. I've never heard anybody be like, I love... Taco time. Oh, dude, we're going to Pacific Center. We gotta eat at the taco time. I would love to get uh, just a little bit of damage. Would help. Or you know what? How about a cool tear effect like Holy Light? How sick would it be if that actually worked out, though? Holy cow! <laughs> that was close. What's up with no Taco Bells in Vancouver? I told you, I'm sick of people talking shit about Vancouver, okay? I just had to deal with it for seven days on a cruise. Not to mention today, everybody woke up, turned on their cell phones because we finally had data because we were back in civilization. There were two Amber Alerts in a row. The whole morning, the ship was just going, brrrr. People, everybody who turned, you knew as soon as they turned their phone on because their phone went, brrrr, brrrr. And then everybody was like, oh my God. Okay, I don't want to make light of this situation because it's still ongoing, right? But we're in Vancouver, and everybody on the cruise ship that got an emergency alert on their phone that said, hey, there's like an active shooter situation in Langley. And I understand that people are not from here, but they were kind of like freaking out. They're like, oh my God, we didn't know this kind of stuff could like happen here. And I was like, relax. Langley is literally like an hour and a half away from where you are right now. And also you're on a damn cruise ship. You got nothing to worry about, right? You're gonna just enjoy the breakfast. Like, you're you're gonna be fine. You're not gonna accidentally like if you're from uh, Mount Vernon, Illinois, and I I've only recently learned that there was a Mount Vernon, Illinois, because there was a dude on the cruise who, whenever they were like, "Hey, where are you guys from?" he would go, "Mount Vernon, Illinois." But anyway, um, I didn't. I I that's like the sixth Mount Vernon I've ever heard of. But he was very proud. Uh, of, of his, he had civic pride, which you know is fine, but uh, you're not. If you're if you're from out of town, you're not going to get in an Uber and be like, "Hey, take me to the Marriott," and they're going to drive you to like downtown Langley. That's not going to happen. I promise you, you're going to be okay. People people were going off on Vancouver, man. There's also another. Do we? So we had a four hour long train trip, like just around the this frontier village in Alaska, kind of. 
And on the whole train trip, there was just another Canadian guy who was like talking to the Americans on the train. And he was like, they're trying to get socialized dental care passed in Canada. All I got to say is I'm glad I'm not 18 and entering the workforce right now because I'd be paying for everybody's dental care. I was like, hey, uh, shithead, you're 70 years old. I'm going to be paying for your dental care, idiot. What are you complaining about? You're old as hell. Not to mention, you probably spend like three grand a year at the dentist. Literally, you're getting free dental care and you're like, I'm glad I'm not a kid. This country's going, I'm you're getting free shit, man. Chill out. Uh-oh. I, I, may I may be required here. Let me just go check on this for a second. I'm gonna go take a look. It's a unhappy baby.
That baby did not want to get in the stroller. <laughs> but we we made it happen. I think you got to put yourself in the baby's mindset, right? Like the baby probably thinks, I mean, the last time we put her in the stroller, she was like on a boat for 7 days. She's probably like, "What? We just got back." I it's it's hard to explain to a young child that we're just going to the grocery store, you know? All I have to tell you, so she only and she got nervous on the ship, which makes sense cuz she's so young. But like um Excuse me, let me grab this. Um, Terrible 2's update just dropped. Well, I don't, I wouldn't, maybe it's because it's my child. But I wouldn't call it Terrible 2's. It's more like, um, you know, she's just exercising emotions she's never experienced before, right? Sometimes it's a little annoying, but I'm also like, you know, I mean, literally, I probably, like, the, one of the things that was annoying on the cruise is sometimes, like, the baby would cry. And then, like, a child would walk by and, like, look at the baby, like, uh, like, ooh, I, baby's crying. I was like, that was you, like, three years ago. I'm not going to say idiot, because I'm talking about, like, children here. I'm like, literally, like, in 2017, this is what you sounded like. And now you're walking by with, like, a soft serve ice cream cone being like, why is that baby crying? You were crying, like... The world is exactly the same as it was when you were still crying. So, like, don't give me this look like, oh, why is that baby crying? I don't know. Why were you crying in, in 2018? This is literally when, like, God of War came out. We haven't even had the sequel yet. Because he just got dunked on. True, true, true. So true, true. But um, she only wanted Kate to hold her, like, the whole trip. Which is rough, because, like, even when it's a baby, like, you know, it starts to get those slow-twitch muscle fibers getting, like, real, real sore, right? So we were leaving dinner one night, and I was like, can daddy pick you up? She was very upset. Very upset. She said, no, no daddy. And then she said, no like any daddy. And if it hadn't been so funny, it, it might have broken my heart. But I was mostly just impressed that she created like a novel sentence that actually got like a meaning across. I was like, holy cow. I think she means she doesn't like daddy ever, which is just obviously false. Because she likes me when my wife is not around. <laughs> but it's, it, what she said instead was, I don't like anybody who's a dad. I was not, I was honestly not offended. I was like, that's an incredible sentence. Like, I I was I was not flattered, obviously, but I was like, okay. I, she mostly I'm just impressed at her verbal development, honestly. And now she's been using that a lot, you know. I'll be like, what do you want for lunch? French fries? And she'll be like, no like French fries, no like any French fries. And I'm like, you literally ate French fries yesterday. What do you mean, don't like any french fries? Like, all you've eaten are french fries. <laughs> it's, it's just, it's nonsense. The, the, the thing that you're saying makes, it doesn't make any coherent sense. I've been with you almost every minute of your life so far. I, the, the sentences you're saying just do not, they're not coherent with who you are as a person. Let her gaslight? I guess she, yeah, sure, you're, okay, she is girl bossing. She was definitely girl bossing at breakfast this morning. When I looked at the menu and said, what do you want to eat? She said muffin. And then there were no muffins on the menu. But I got to tell you, when the server came by, he said, what does the baby want? Well, they're contractually obligated to say, what will the princess have this morning? And I feel bad for that. I want to tell them that they don't have to do that. But I'm sure that they probably are like, I'd happily do it just to not get yelled at, which is fine. But either way, um... He said, what will our princess have this morning? And I said, is it possible you could get me a chocolate chip muffin? And he said, very good, sir. And wouldn't you know it, before my order that was actually on the menu arrived, this dude was back with the chocolate chip muffin. I don't even know where the hell he got it. <laughs> he, he brought it down and, you know, I guess me went up to the buffet to get it, I, I guess. It all probably goes to the same kitchen or something. I don't know. So off the secret man. It was probably his lunch. It did have his name on it. Ooh, Mega Satan? 
Disney cruises are based like that. I said it, I'm not comfortable with being treated like that. And I'm, most people say that when they're yelled at, but I'm like, I'm not comfortable being treated like that nicely. I want to do like apologize every time it happened. You took a tears down? I don't know, why, why not? Look at this, I, got, I had a hundred rate of fire for a second. That seemed kind of sick, although now it seems very, very slow. You had 120 earlier? I don't know what I'm doing, man. I'm just... <laughs> I literally... I have no no thoughts head empty right now, except, like, under the sea is just blaring through my head right now. I definitely did get the vibe that, like, if you were nice to the crew staff, and, like, if I think if you told them that you killed a person... Not on the boat, because they'd have to report that. But I think if you were like, if you went to one of the ports and you committed murder, and then when you were in the lounge later that night, you were like, you know, I killed a guy on at, on land today. When we were ashore, I committed murder. They would be like, very good, sir. I won't tell if you don't. I think they would cover for it. I, I don't think they would report it. I, unless you were a jerk to them beforehand, in which case maybe, I guess, but... I really did get that vibe, which is not how it should be, but it felt nice. <laughs> no, I didn't kill anybody when I was ashore. You'd hear the populations of the towns that we were in. There was nobody to see, much less, like, you know, injure. It's just, it was just sea lions and, and like, porpoises and stuff, man. I do want to know, though, is there a, does anybody work in the travel and tourism industry? Is there like a database where you can tell me the wage of a server on the Disney Cruise Line? There's no there's no database. There's no repository. There's no way that our server was being paid 275 an hour plus tips. Not possible. They're not all... They were not people who were kidnapped on the ship. <laughs> They're not ex-convicts. Don't just guess and say minimum wage, dude. I'm t I, I just... I'm, I want to know. I'm curious. Because, like, I... <laughs> Less than you think their room and board is included? But what? what they, they live in the office, though. That shouldn't count. Like... Hold on, hold on. This is... Let me see here. Employees earn on average... 58500 annually, or $28 per hour, which is 12% lower than the national salary average of 66000 per year. It's an interesting... I mean, like, that salary is is pretty good for wait staff, for sure, I would say. But also, you literally, like, the, the guy... And this is maybe like, what do you mean, plus room and board? They live in the office, man! You want them to pay rent on their damn room on the boat? It doesn't make any sense. It's like when uh, you get invited to like a media event and they're like, oh, the flight's free. And you're like, oh, thanks. I've always wanted to go to Baltimore in January. That sounds like it's a real destination for me right now. But anyway, it's like I'm not saying necessarily it's low or it's high, but like they're literally working like like 18 hour days like we we ate dinner we we had the 545 dinner slot because we had a child it's very early don't get me wrong but the same dude is doing the 845 dinner slot then i go to breakfast at 7 30 a.m they got the dude who was my waiter he's slinging out hash browns behind the buffet he's like uh Good morning, Mr. Ryan. And I'm like, what the hell are you doing? You were in a suit the last time I saw you. That was only like nine hours ago, and you've done 12 hours of work since then. Then it's like lunchtime, and he's the dude that's handing out the cutlery. And I'm like, do you ever, do do you ever get a break while the while the thing is at sea? Like it's crazy. Probably not. Well, I mean, you're right. They literally can't leave work. But then there was a part of me that was also like. I mean, he doesn't even have Wi-Fi, right? Like, so what's he going to do anyway? 
It would almost, it, honestly, I should have gotten the job like halfway through the cruise just to distract me from playing my damn British crosswords app. By the way, I'm, I'm so, and not to, again, not to punch down on the United States of America, but I will say I am happy to be back in a country where I've never seen a Let's Go Brandon bumper sticker. I was not aware. I knew that it was like a thing. I didn't know that they were on like one in 12 cars. I would like to express my sympathies to the citizens of the United States for being immersed in this environment. I always thought it was like something you'd like poke fun at a little bit. You'd be like, ha ha ha. But then when I was there, I was like, oh, this is kind of like some, you would like drive past the house that would have like a Let's Go Brandon bumper sticker on the house. And then a flag on a flagpole that said, don't blame me. I voted for the other guy. And uh, I was like, you know what? This just seems like kind of a, a neighborhood where things seem inhospitable right now between the neighbors, to be honest. Anyway, slash marker. Um, that's Isaac too. 